Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the entire Bible in 123 days. We're on day 3. Today we'll be reading Genesis chapters 22 through 28. So let's get started here in Genesis chapter 22. Verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, I am here. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. They came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son, and the angel of the of Yahweh, the Lord, called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of Yahweh it shall be seen. The angel of Yahweh called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith Yahweh, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. And it came to pass after these things that it was told Abraham, saying, Behold, Milcah, she hath also borne children unto thy brother Nahor. Buzz, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Kemuel, the father of Aram, and Chesed, and Hazo, and Pildash, and Jidlap, and Bethuel. And Bethuel begat Rebkah. These eight Milcah did bear to Nahor, Abraham's brother. And his concubine, whose name was Reuma, she bare also Teba, and Gaham, and Thahash, and Makkah. Genesis 23. And Sarah was hundred and seven and twenty years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kerjatharba, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my lord, thou art mighty prince among us, and in the choice of our sepulchres bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayst bury thy dead. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zohar that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field, 
For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it for me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of the city, saying, Nay, my lord, hear me, the field give I thee, and the cave that is therein I give it thee. In the presence of thy sons of my people I give it thee, bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed him, down himself before the people of the land, and he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, but if thou wilt give it, I pray thee, hear me, I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My lord, hark unto me, the land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury thy, therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. In the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field in the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field that were in all the borders round about, were made sure. And to Abraham for a possession in the presence of the children of Heth, before all that went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. The field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. Genesis 24 And Abraham was old, and well stricken in age, and Yahweh had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put I, pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by Yahweh that God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go into my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And a servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again to the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. Yahweh, God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the one will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. The servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. The servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hands, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Yahweh, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me a good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, they stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let thy night pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a, a virgin neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. The man wondering at her held his peace to whether Yahweh had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold and said whose daughter art thou tell me i pray thee is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in and she said unto him i am the daughter of bethuel the son of milcah which she bare unto nahor 
She said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough, and room to lodge in. And the man bowed his head and worshipped Yahweh. And he said, Blessed be Yahweh, God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, Yahweh led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban. And Laban ran out unto the man unto the well. And it came to pass when he saw the earring and the bracelets upon his sister's hand, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of, the, of Yahweh, therefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house and room for the camels. The man came into the house, and ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant, and Yahweh hath blessed my master greatly, and he has become great, and hath given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants, and maid servants and camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go into my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, Yahweh, before whom I walk, will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way. And thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred, and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred. And if they give not to thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well, and said, O Yahweh, God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go, behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, I will say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels. Let the same be the woman whom Yahweh hath appointed out, of, out for my master's son. Before I had done speaking in mine heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down into the well and drew water, and I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste and let down her pitcher from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. So I drank, and she made the camels to drink also. And I asked her, and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, now her son, whom Milcah bare unto him, and I put the earring upon her face and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped Yahweh and blessed Yahweh, God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, the thing proceedeth forth from Yahweh. We cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her, and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as Yahweh hath spoken. And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped Yahweh, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah. He gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night. And they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten, after that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing Yahweh hath prospered my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel, and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah, and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. They blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands and millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of whose which hate them. And Rebekah rose in her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah, and went his way. And Isaac came from the well, way of the well, the high Rioi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lightened off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, 
What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Genesis 25 Then again Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah, and she bare him Zimram, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ib Ishbak, and Shua, and Jokshan begat Sheba and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan were Asherim, and Leturshim, and Leumim, and the sons of Midian, Epha, and Eber, and Hanok, and Abida, and Elda. All these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. The sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life which he lived, a hundred threescore and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and was gathered to his people. And his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zohar, the Hittite, which is before Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth. There was Abraham buried, and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that God blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the well, the Hyroi. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, barren to Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generations. And just a quick note, I'm going to try my best to pronounce everything correctly, so bear with me if I uh, don't get everything just right. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nebojath, and Kedar, and Abdil, and Mis Mibsam, and Mishma, and Dunma, and Masa, Hadar, and Tema, Jetur, Napish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles, twelve princes according to their nations. These are the years of the life of Ishmael, a hundred and thirty and seven years, and he gave up the ghosts and died, and was gathered unto his people. They dwelt from Havilah to Shur, that is, before Egypt, as thou goest toward Assyria, and he died in the presence of all his brethren. These are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was forty years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahweh for his wife because she was barren, and Yahweh was entreated of him, and Rebekah his wife conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahweh. Yahweh said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the other shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Jacob sawed pot pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he sware unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Genesis 26 there was a famine in the land, and beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Yahweh appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. 
Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice, and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, she is my sister. Ah, uh, again, for he feared to say she is my wife, lest, he said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety, she is thy wife, and how saidst thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have lying with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that toucheth this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. And Isaac sowed in that land, and received in the same year a hundredfold, and Yahweh blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great, for he had possession of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed from thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father, for the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servant digged in the valley, and found there a well of springing water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well, and for that they strove not, and he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now Yahweh hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba, and Yahweh appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. He built an altar there, and he called upon the name of Yahweh, and pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants digged a well. Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Azhah, one of his friends, and Pekol, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto him, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that Yahweh was with thee. And we said, Let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee that thou wilt do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art not blessed with Yahweh. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they rose up betimes in the morning, and swear one to another, and Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass on the same day that Isaac's servant came and told him concerning the well which they had digged, and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba, therefore the name of the city is Beersheba, unto this day. And Esau was forty years old when he took to wife Judith the daughter of Berai the Hittite, and Bashameth the daughter of Elon the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. Genesis 27 And it came to pass that when Isaac was old, and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau, his eldest son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here am I. And he said, Behold, now I am old, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out in the field, and take me some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison, and to bring it. And Rebekah spake to Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat and bless thee before Yahweh, before my death. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. 
Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, and he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, the sow is my brother is a hairy man, and am smooth man. My father peradventure will feel me, and I shall see to him as a deceiver, and I shall bring a curse upon me, and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice, and go fetch me them. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother, and his mother made savory meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father? And he said, Here am I. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am a sow thy firstborn. I have done according as thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee, sit and eat of my venison, that thou may that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because Yahweh thy God brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my very son of sour or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of a sow. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy as his brother Asau's hands, so he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Asau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and did eat. And he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See the smell of my son, as it is the smell of a field which Yahweh hath blessed. Therefore God give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine, that the people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be lord of, over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down unto thee. Cursed be every one that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. It came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from his hunting, and he also had made savory meat, and brought it unto his father, and said unto his father, Let my father arise, and eat of his son's venison, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very exceedingly, and said, Who? Where is he that hath taken venison, and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all before thou camest, and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry, and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came with subtlety, and hath taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he rightly named Jacob? For he hath supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright, and behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. And he said, Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me? And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren have I given him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above, and by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing worth his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand, then will I slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau, her elder son, were told to Rebekah, and she sent and called Jacob her younger son, and said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau is touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother, to Haran, and tarry with him a few days, until thy brother's fear turn away, until thy brother's anger turn away from thee, and he forget that which thou hast done to him. Then I will send and fetch thee from thence. Why should I be deprived of you both in one day? And Rebekah said to Isaac, 
I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? Genesis 28 Isaac called Jacob, and blessed him, and charged him, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Padan Aram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from the thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people, and give thee a, the blessing of Abraham to thee, and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padan Aram, unto Laban, son of Bethuel the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob, and sent him away to Padan Aram, to take him a wife from thence, and that as he blessed him, he gave him charge, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan, and that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother, and was gone to Padan Aram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael, and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nejaboth, to be his wife. And Jacob went out from Beersheba, and went toward Haran. And he lightened upon a certain place, and tarried there all night, because the sun was set. And he took of the stones that place, and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. And, and he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up upon the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, Yahweh stood above it and said, I am Yahweh, God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, Surely Yahweh is in this place, and I knew it not. He was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, took the stone that he had put for his pillows, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. The name of that city was called Luz at the first. Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall Yahweh be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Alright, it's the end of Genesis 28. I forgot how interesting uh, the first few books of, well, the whole Bible is interesting, but I love the um, the books of the Bible that are more story-driven, like this book, Genesis. Um, there are, are other books that are, you know, coming up that are more um, very detailed and like uh, genealogy type uh, style of books, but... Uh, Genesis is like basically you're reading a story and it's just so interesting very interesting it's like you're actually um, well I mean you are reading a story a real story play out so it's really cool that's gonna be it for today guys thanks for joining me hope you have a great evening morning noon wherever you're at remember to put God first in everything you do have faith in him trust in him and wait upon him and you'll never be sorry and we'll see you tomorrow God willingly with more Bible reading so Thanks and take care.